basically, at the last meeting, the motion that the committee had adopted was that the committee consider next steps and potential additional witnesses on Tuesday, March 19th, 2019. This motion would um, negate that motion. It would go against the spirit of it. So my recommendation to you for the motion is that you say in the scope of your motion, notwithstanding the motion that the committee adopted at its previous meeting on March 6, on March 6 2019, at the beginning of your motion. That is fine. Okay. So uh, then the motion is receivable. Please go ahead. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Chair. We are back here today to discuss uh, whether the Prime Minister interfered politically in the uh, criminal prosecution of a Liberal-linked corporation, SNC Lavalin. The request is for Jody Wilson-Raybould to have the opportunity to complete her testimony. You will recall that Ms. Wilson Rabel was not allowed to complete her testimony at her order, last appearance. Point of order, Mr. Clerk. Uh, I just saw someone took a, taking a picture of us. So please, I want him to erase it, please. Absolutely. Uh, so I, we didn't see that, but please, uh, would you mind? Thank you very much. Merci, Monsieur Berthold. Please continue, Mr. Polyèvre. Yes. So, um, Ms. Uh, Wilson Rabel was not permitted to, com to complete her testimony. The Prime Minister granted her a limited waiver applying only to the period during which she was Attorney General. However, after he removed her from that position, she witnessed events that were so egregious she considered it warranted her resignation from Cabinet altogether. Canadians deserve to know what those events were. So far, the Prime Minister has kept in place a partial gag order preventing them from finding out. If I could make an illustration of that gag order, let me uh, read back into the record an exchange at this committee between the Honorable Lisa Raitt, Deputy Leader of the Conservative Party, and the former Attorney, Attorney General. For clarity, can you tell us what you discussed with the Prime Minister at your meetings in Vancouver on February 11th? Jody Wilson-Raybould. I cannot. Can you tell us why you resigned from Cabinet? I cannot. Can you tell us what, discuss, uh, uh, what was discussed with the Cabinet on February 19th? I cannot. Ms. Uh, Raitt then asks, if the issues surrounding your ability to communicate these conversations to this committee were resolved and you were able to be released from Cabinet confidence or from privilege, would you be willing to return to this committee and give us testimony again? I would be, she answers. In other words, this is not just another kick at the can. This is the motion proposes to give Ms. Wilbur, or Ms. Wilson Rabel her first opportunity to tell the full story. Now, Members across the way may try to come up with uh, excuses for silencing her uh, and preventing her from speaking on behalf of the, the Prime Minister who's indicated he does not want her to say any more. So one of the excuses might be, it'll take a lot of time. We should be focused on other things. Well, Parliament can walk and chew gum at the same time. We have numerous parliamentary committees that can work on budgetary matters, uh, environmental matters, legislative matters in other places. We have a parliament of uh, two chambers which can debate any other matters at any other time, even while Ms. Wilson-Raybould is testifying here. So there's no reason why Cabinet can't continue doing its work on a whole range of other issues uh, through its regular meetings while she comes here and testifies. In other words, there's no reason why the, the, the business of government and Parliament cannot go on 
while Wilson, Ms. Wilson-Raybould is allowed to complete her testimony. Second, they might say that uh, the matters that she would discuss uh, are out of bounds, that uh, they happened after she left as Attorney General, and therefore they uh, are not uh, up for discussion in this study. Well, that would be a funny excuse because the Prime Minister and Gerald Butts have both made comments that zero in on the time period about which Ms. Wilson-Raybould is forbidden to speak. So they can speak about it. They can talk about those time frames. They can give specific interventions about what went on after she was removed as Attorney General, but so far, far she cannot. So it's not out of bounds for them. Therefore, it must not be out of bounds for her. And finally, some might say, well, she had an awful long time to speak already, and therefore she doesn't need to speak again. Well, as I pointed out, there are, she, as she, and as she has pointed out, in a letter to you, Mr. Chair, she specifically highlighted the restrictions that she was under while she was here, the first time, and indicated that there are additional material events that occurred outside of that way uh, that, have, that she has not been permitted to speak about. Those events, of course, being so severe, so important, and so egregious that they caused her to resign from cabinet altogether. Now, we know her resignation was linked to this particular scandal. She has not been able to tell us exactly what triggered the resignation. But we do know that it was in relation to the Prime Minister's political interference to secure, to, to shelve the, char the criminal charges against this liberal-linked corporation. In other words, it is pertinent to, this, to the terms of this particular study. So uh, I, I, uh, I think the, the, the ball is in the, the court of uh, Prime Minister Trudeau. And it is for him and his representatives to explain what harm would it do? if she were to complete her testimony? How would the public interest be uh, uh, diminished if she were allowed to come back here and tell the things that she was forbidden to say last time? Uh, what, di what, what, what harm would it cause Canadians to find out the whole truth? Uh, I can think of nothing. Uh, and so we've heard the first part of the truth, but the rest of the truth remains a secret. We simply ask that the committee agree that she come back here, that the Prime Minister lift the remaining partial gag order, and that we let her speak. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Polyev. The clerk is keeping a speaker's list, so right now I have Ms. Ms. Ramsey, Mr. Berthold, Mr. Drouin, uh, and then Mr. Cooper after Mr. Drouin. Anyone else? Okay, so uh, right now Ms. Ramsey. Ms. Ramsey? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, the point in time that we've arrived at is one that is filled with questions. There are half-truths, uh, there's changing stories, and people around the country are watching what's happening. And unfortunately today, they don't have answers to many of the questions that they're posing. Ms. Wilson-Raybould you know, has been asked to come back and testify. And if the Liberals don't want to hold an independent public inquiry, which is something I think we've been clear uh, we believe is an important step, then they must allow this committee to do its work. And that means inviting Ms. Wilson-Raybould back. Uh, the clerk of the Privy Council, Michael Warnick, was allowed to come back and uh, rebut testimony. And Canadians are viewing his return uh, as being fair, in the same way that they're viewing Ms. Wilson-Raybould's return as being fair and an important part of the rest of this story. And to be quite honest, it's categorically unfair not to extend her the same courtesy. Uh, she's also said herself uh, that she would like the order in council amended so that she can speak to the matters after January 14th. And I can quote her from her testimony here at the Justice Committee on February 27th, where she said, my narrative stops here. I must reiterate to the committee my concern outlined in the letter to the chair yesterday. That is the order in council 2019-0105 addresses only my time as the Attorney General of Canada and therefore does nothing to release me from restrictions that apply to my communications while I proudly served as the Minister of Veterans Affairs and in, in relation to my resignation from that post or my presentation to cabinet 
cabinet after I resigned. Those are her own words about her desire to be able to speak about what happened past that period. Uh, Mr. Butts and Mr. Warnick's testimony was at times inconsistent with what we heard from the former Attorney General. And it's imperative that she has the opportunity to address these points in the same way that was afforded to Mr. Warnick. Um, Liberals really need to treat this with the seriousness seriousness that it deserves and this can't be something that uh, you know is is pushed to the side under some guise of the fact that this is typically discussed in camera or the fact that it hasn't happened before uh, we are in uncharted waters here in what's taking place around this particular uh, issue and so we need to behave appropriately in a way that will reflect that and that means having her come back to the committee this is something that New Democrats have heard when we've been in our constituencies the past couple of weeks. It certainly has been the dominating headlines across the country. All of the major news outlets are writing stories on the fact that we don't have the full truth and that is because we don't have the period of time that Ms. Wilson-Raybould simply cannot speak about. So this is about transparency. This is about accountability. And these are things that uh, the Liberal government ran on, as the Liberal members know well here at the committee, and this is a test of that. This is a test as to whether or not those are just words or whether there's actually meaning behind those words. And today is an opportunity for the Liberals on the committee to revisit having her come before the committee and the importance of that to Canadians. I can tell you that uh, you know we're being flooded in our offices, New Democrats, with people. I've had people walking in my office who are talking about what is happening, asking questions that we simply don't have answers to. So that's what we're seeking here, is to be able to have this lifted off of her so that she can speak, as she has indicated publicly and here at the committee, that she has a desire to do. Canadians want the other half of the story from her, and she deserves an opportunity in the same way that Mr. Warnick did to be able to come and to speak to what has been said about her and things that she has not had the privilege to be able to speak about. So lastly, the committee must recognize that there's a degree of urgency around this, and there is no good reason that can be presented today why Ms. Wilson-Raybould can't return to the committee to testify. Thank you very much, Ms. Ramsey. Uh, so right now, Monsieur Berthold, Mr. Drouin, <laughs> Mr. Cooper, Mr. Barrett, Mr. Polyev are the next people on the list. Uh, Monsieur Berthold. Merci beaucoup, Monsieur le Président. Monsieur le Président, euh, permettez-moi de relire la motion pour laquelle on est en train de comparaître aujourd'hui, motion qui a été déposée par mon collègue. Euh, suite à la déclaration publique de Mme Jody Wilson-Raybould, le 6 mars, offrant de présenter plus d'informations aux Canadiens si on lui demandait, que le comité l'invite à comparaître au plus tard le jeudi 14 mars. C'est une motion simple, M. le Président, une motion qui euh, fait effectivement écho aux demandes répétées qu'on a entendues au cours des derniers jours, des dernières semaines, euh, de la part des gens euh, que l'on a rencontrés, de la part euh, de plusieurs commentateurs. Pourquoi est-ce que Mme Raybould a-t-elle été empêchée euh, de donner toute sa version des événements qui nous amènent euh, à être ici aujourd'hui? Monsieur le Président, euh, on tente de laisser entendre, on tente de faire croire qu'il ne s'est rien passé, que c'était euh, la, la routine quotidienne dans un cabinet, qu'il y a des discussions, qu'il y a des différences de perception et que parfois ça arrive. Monsieur le Président, euh, ce n'est pas ce qui est arrivé. Ce qui est arrivé, il y a eu des démissions. Il y a eu une ministre qui a été rétrogradée. Il y a eu une ministre qui a démissionné. Le conseiller principal du premier ministre a remis sa démission. Et euh, cette affaire-là a pris une ampleur qui fait en sorte que la confiance même du premier ministre a été ébranlée. Pourquoi doit-on entendre Mme wilson Ribold encore, M. le Président? La réponse est simple, parce qu'elle a elle-même dit qu'elle n'a pas pu tout dire. Elle a été contrainte dans son témoignage qu'elle a livré le 27 février à dire seulement une partie euh, des éléments qui euh, font l'objet euh, de l'affaire qui est devant nous. Et, euh, Monsieur le Président, je vais rappeler dans la lettre qu'elle vous envoyait le 26 février, où elle nous parlait du témoignage à venir qu'elle livrait le 27 février, euh, que le décret euh, émis par le premier ministre lui permettant de parler en partie sur cette affaire-là disait ceci. « Il ne me permet pas, et je cite la lettre, M. le Président, il ne me permet pas de divulguer le contenu des communications pendant mon mandat de ministre des anciens combattants, ni des communications relatives à ma démission de ce poste ou mon mémoire au cabinet suivant ma démission. » Plus loin, M. le Président, 
La lettre dit que le décret ne me libère pas des restrictions qui m'empêchent de parler librement des événements. Je leur dis qui m'empêche de parler librement des événements qui se sont produits après mon départ du poste de procureur général. Monsieur le Président, si la ministre wilson Rebel nous dit qu'elle ne peut pas parler des événements qui se sont produits après son départ du poste de procureur général, c'est donc qu'il y a eu des événements, c'est donc qu'il y a eu des choses. Et comme par hasard, on a entendu euh, d'autres personnes parler de ces mêmes événements, M. Botts. M. Trudeau, on fait allusion à ces événements qui se sont euh, passés après le 14 janvier, euh, M. le Président. Et malheureusement, Mme Raybould nous vous avisait dans sa lettre du 26 février qu'elle n'était pas en mesure parce que le décret ne lui permettait pas. Et permettez-moi de revenir au témoignage de Mme wilson Raybould le 27 février, M. le Président, lorsqu'elle était questionnée par euh, ma collègue Lisa Raitt. Et, et je cite, M. le Président, des extraits de ce témoignage-là. L'honorable Lisa Raitt. Par souci de clarté, pouvez-vous nous dire de quoi vous avez discuté avec le premier ministre lors de vos rencontres à Vancouver le 11 février? Réponse de l'honorable Jody wilson Ribble, Je ne peux pas. » Une autre question, l'honorable Lisa Raitt. Pouvez-vous nous dire pourquoi vous avez démissionné du cabinet? Réponse de Mme wilson Ribble, Je ne peux pas. » Une autre question de Mme Raitt. Pouvez-vous nous dire ce qui a été discuté avec le cabinet le, 17, le 19 février? Réponse de Mme wilson Ribble, je ne peux pas. Une autre question qui nous démontrera cette fois-là que Mme wilson Ribble est prête à parler. Mme Raitt, si ce qui entrave votre aptitude à communiquer le contenu de ces conversations au comité était réglé et que vous puissiez être libéré du secret du cabinet ou du secret professionnel, seriez-vous disposé à revenir devant le comité et à témoigner de nouveau? Réponse de Mme wilson Ribble, oui. Monsieur le Président, c'est clair, c'est clair que Mme wilson Ribble a encore des choses à dire. C'est clair que présentement, il y a des gens qui préfèrent que Mme wilson Ribble ne parle pas. Et c'est clair qu'il y a ici, en ce moment, des gens qui sont capables de faire en sorte que Mme wilson Ribble donne aux Canadiens toute la version et toute la vérité sur sa perception et comment elle a vécu ces événements, Monsieur le Président. C'est très facile pour le premier ministre d'indiquer... Euh, à ses euh, députés de dire que, oui, on va permettre au comité d'entendre encore Mme wilson Ribble, Oui, on va lever les restrictions sur son témoignage. Et oui, les Canadiens vont avoir accès à toute la version de Mme wilson Ribble. Ce n'est pas normal qu'on permette à des gens de dire des choses sur des événements alors que la personne principale concernée ne puisse pas elle-même venir livrer un témoignage par rapport, justement, à ces mêmes événements. Monsieur le Président, il y a d'importants détails qui nous préoccupent, d'importants détails qui sont présentement cachés, d'importants détails qui nous échappent et que euh, beaucoup de gens tentent euh, de faire euh, beaucoup, beaucoup d'efforts pour éviter qu'on puisse y avoir accès. Les Canadiens, depuis une semaine, je me promène partout, j'ai discuté avec plein de gens, des gens de mon comté, des gens d'autres régions, et on veut avoir la vérité de Mme wilson Ribble. Alors, pourquoi, euh, pourquoi est-ce que ce comité, qui jusqu'à présent a permis à certains faits d'éclater au jour, ne permettrait pas à Mme wilson Ribble de revenir témoigner, M. le Président? Je pense que le premier ministre doit clairement donner une indication claire aux membres du comité à l'effet que, oui, il va autoriser Mme Raybould, wilson Raybould à donner toute sa version. Oui, il va autoriser les Canadiens à connaître toute la vérité. C'est important, M. le Président. Et euh, c'est pourquoi, évidemment, je vais supporter euh, cette, euh, cette motion. Et, et, et si, monsieur, euh, si monsieur le Premier ministre n'a rien à cacher, ben, alors, il ne devrait pas craindre le témoignage de Mme wilson Raybould. Merci beaucoup. Merci beaucoup, M. Berthold. Juste, juste pour euh, mentionner aux membres du comité, vous avez cité euh, la proposition de M. Polièvre, mais on a amendé ça pour dire nonobstant la décision prise par la comité le, le 6 mars. Donc, c'est le même en français qu'en qu anglais. Euh, juste, juste pour... Euh... OK. Euh, M. le Président, monsieur... je, je suis d'accord, c'est juste qu'on n'avait pas... Oui, 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 non, absolument. Je veux, je veux juste parce que tout le monde doit sa savoir qu'est-ce qu'il qu qu discute. Euh, M. Drouin. Merci beaucoup, euh, M. le Président. Comme vous savez, je ne suis pas un membre régulier de ce comité, euh, mais 
comme toute personne ici, je crois que j'ai eu la chance de regarder euh, les événements du 6 mars. Je vois que l'opposition a, a bien, bel et bien cité le 6 mars. Et moi-même, euh, j'ai regardé les événements du 6 mars. Je me souviens très bien que, et je cite, que le, le comité avait adopté une motion. Et cette motion, c'est que le comité considère les prochaines étapes et les témoins potentiels additionnels le mardi 19 mars 2019. Alors, dans cet esprit, je propose que le comité s'ajourne maintenant. Point of order. 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 The clerk has advised me that it's a non-debatable motion, non-amendable non motion. Or that happened. Um, so we... We do have a point of order, and that does take precedence. Well, the question, the question is, does this, I'm asking you, does the point of order take precedence? I don't, I don't think so. I have to the point of order. 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 Mr. Polyev, what's your point of order? My point of order is that um, right now we are de debating a motion that I put forward, and you re you acknowledge that it was duly placed before the committee. Um, the member across the way uh, is uh, taking stripping members of their ability to speak on behalf of their constituents here in this committee, which is a delegate assembly of the House of Commons. We have the right to speak. Numerous people remain on the speaker's list. Uh, to actually, it is it is right in the standing orders that members of parliament have the ability to speak. And I'm speaking, and, and I'm speaking right now. I know that you want to silence the debate. You want to shut. You, you, your your government has attempted. Mr. Polyev, can you get to your to, point of order? Can yeah, you get to your actual point of order? I actually have started my point of order. Well, Rain, and, Rain, Rain, and no, I, I, it has to be it has to be an actual point of order. So it I'm, is indeed I, a point of order. So let me. Let it is you. indeed a point of order, and and I appreciate that this is a very uncomfortable subject for okay. uh, the the okay. Trudeau majority on this committee. But we, is while the Prime point Minister point? is trying to silence his former Attorney yeah. General, he will not silence members of the official opposition. So, so at this point, and this is a point of debate. debate. We're going to move to a vote. Right We're going to, right Mr. 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 Right. Mr. Because, because I've spoken to the clerk, and at this point you haven't raised a point of order, you've raised the point of debate. Okay. Debate. I, I under, okay. uh, thank, thank you. We're going to move to a vote. All those, all those in favor of the motion? Like a recorded, vote, like a recorded please? vote, please, Mr. Chair. Recorded vote. I have Mr. another Mr. point Clerk, of order. Mr. Clerk, I have another point. We had a request for a recorded vote. Please proceed another, to the roll call. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I do have, a, I do have another point of order. Yes. Disgusting. Uh, this is a cover-up. Mr. In favor of the motion? Yes. Uh, Monsieur de Rouen. Madame Lapointe. Wait. Mr. McKinnon. What a shame. What a shame. Cover-up. De quoi de cover up. No, it's a cover up. I'm voting against. Mr. Cooper? Cover I'm voting against this cover up. Uh, Mr. Bolivar. Against the cover up. And Ms. Ramsey. I'm strongly voting opposed and I'm shocked at the behavior of it's my despicable. colleagues. It's disgusting. So, so that being you said, should be ashamed of your. That being said, the motion is adopted. Meeting is adjourned. Prime Minister?